We're going to learn how to make a honeycomb structure with Infusion 360. My name's Adam James, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for jumping right on in. All right, so as we open Fusion 360, I think I'd like to present just a quick overview of what we're going to do. Um, again, the goal is to learn how to make this honeycomb structure pattern uh, anywhere you might be implementing this, right? Not just a phone case. I just thought this was a unique example uh, and, and applicable to not only 3D printing, but uh, CAD design as a whole. So the the uh, polygons will be basically the whole cutouts and then the distance between them will be the wall thickness uh, for this honeycomb structure itself. And it'll look something like this um, in the end. I'll leave a step file on the STL to this design uh, linked below in my Thingiverse account and you all can reference that um, but if you are not referencing any design go ahead and just click new at the top here within fusion 360 and then you can do uh, create a sketch and then click on whatever plane you'd like to um, sketch on and then you can follow along from here uh, but we'll be using this because i think it's a good good example um, a applicable example so i'll click on the back of this phone case uh, and then create sketch and it's going to be upside down. So let's reorient that. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is you always want to work in open space when you're creating a honeycomb structure. Uh, and I've <laughs> been guilty of not doing that first and then redoing the whole design after creating space to work in. Uh, it makes the rest of the design process way more uh, efficient. So. What we want to do is just do P for project and click on the back of this case. So it projects the whole um, 2D surfaces for us and then modify, click offset. And we're going to click on the back, this kind of outside. And then this is going to be our wall thickness. So I'm just going to do two, uh, whoops, negative two for the offset, hit enter. And then similar to that uh, camera cutout, also do offset and then do two millimeters as well and hit enter. So now we're left with this um, big open space that we can extrude. So we'll do a finished sketch. Uh, we'll left click on that and hit extrude. And then just make sure when we pull this arrow through that it indeed is cutting and not <laughs> adding material. That is not what we want. Um, so that is all good to go. Next, what we're going to do is create an offset plane about, you just do five millimeters is fine. Um, so click on this back surface that we just extruded from and then hit five. Um, make sure we're offset from that surface and click OK. Um, and there's a reason I do this uh, and I will speak to that later, but uh, it does save some time in the long run. So click on this newly created plane that we just made, left click and then do create sketch. And we are, we need to reorient once again. So this is where we start to create our polygons for the honeycomb structure itself. So what we're gonna do is go to create and uh, polygon and make sure you click on inscribe polygon. Just anywhere in the blank space is fine. Uh, and left click and left click. And we're also going to go to horizontal vertical. We can click on this. Uh, you can also do it the other way, right? If you want the uh, the polygon to be oriented, say like this instead, you could do vertical and click on like that. Uh, we're just going to use the one on the left for now. Uh, and then we'll do D for dimension. I'm just going to give this. Um, line a thickness or a, a length of five uh, you can change this depending on how big you want the whole size this is basically just going to be the whole size of the honeycombs um, that you want you can do 10 millimeters anything you'd like but i think five works pretty well for the purpose of this example so we'll keep it there uh, and then we'll do create uh, we're going to do polygon again inscribed polygon and we're just going to do the same thing, left click, left click, and then make this horizontal escape. And then this 
also needs to be a length of five. So D for dimension, left click and five. Enter, escape, let's click on line and then click on this point and this point and then hit perpendicular up in the constraints tab at the top and make sure these two lines are perpendicular to each other. That just ensures that this is parallel um, when we're making this. So now we've got these uh, two polygons and we would like to, I, I guess, constrain our wall thickness. So let's left click and then hit X for construction and then D for dimension. Uh, and you can enter any amount you would like here, but I'm just gonna do two um, for a two millimeter wall thickness and that is a-okay. So now we've got this kind of polygon um, design that we can now pattern. So that's that's gonna be the next step to get here. Before we pattern though, we wanna know our pattern spacing. So quick and easy way to do this, um, for the spacing in the Y direction going up and down, I like to just measure um, this polygon. So make a line here and then go up to measure and then you can click on this. So the spacing is going to be, for the purpose of this example, 4.33 millimeters plus the wall thickness, which is two millimeters. And then we, we're gonna have another polygon, right? So half of that polygon, which we just calculated here, is another 4.33. So it's going to be 10.66 in Y. And no, I did not do that off the top of my head. I have this <laughs> written down. Um, so that's going to be our Y spacing and then our X spacing is calculated by, we can make another line, just make sure it's vertical and kind of like that. And then make another line, make sure it's horizontal. And so this distance times two is basically going to be the spacing in X going left and right. So 9.232 times two is 18.2. Four six four, so that'll be our our number there. So write those down uh, because we will need them for the next step, and then just go ahead and delete the the lines that we just created. So now that we know that, we can select these and go up here into create and rectangular pattern. So this is going to be our honeycomb uh, patterning step. So we make sure that the objects are selected, uh, and then this is set to spacing, not extent. And then instead of one direction, uh, let's just do symmetric and symmetric. And then this should be our Y spacing, which is 10.66. So let's enter down here, 10.66. Great. And then this must be our X spacing, so we will enter 18.464. And I hit enter prematurely, so let's just do um, control Z. Let's create one more time, rectangular pattern. Select these, scroll down here. This distance in Y is 10.66. And then this distance in X is 18.464. Make sure this has spacing, do symmetric, click symmetric. And then all we're going to do is up these quantities until the entire phone case is filled up entirely. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, you don't wanna do it any more than you have to, otherwise the next steps are going to take quite a bit of time because it takes fusion of quite a bit longer to compute um, based on the quantity of, of patterning sketches that you're doing. So just keep that in mind. Now we're gonna do P for project, select this surface and this surface and click okay. That 
that's great. So the reason that we did this as an offset plane is it makes it way easier to <laughs> select these and then extrude them. If you do it on the same face as the body, sometimes it's hard to select and then you have to kind of go over it. So this saves you some time in the long run, I've found, and then you just do an extra extrude at the end, which is really easy. So we're going to select the spacing in between the um, the holes or the polygons that we created for the honeycomb itself. Um, so just control select all of these spaces in between. And it should be all of them, it looks like. And do finish sketch and then extrude. And then just select this little ledge because that is the other side of the wall that we'd like to go up to and then click OK. Our sketch should now be hidden, and then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna create a cut, and then I think we're done. So select this surface, Control select, 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 all wall holding control, extrude, and then select the back surface. And it'll probably automatically go to cut, yep. And we'll click OK. And that's our honeycomb structure. Uh, looks really cool. In my opinion, it's something you could go uh, 3D print. Uh, and you could use this for a wide variety of different applications. But pretty simple and doesn't take that long if you're using a patterning technique. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.